ridiculous. Call for a personal foul. That was absolutely ridiculous. The Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. Up on down. Here comes a one-two pitch. Red Sox win the World Series. I don't know. It's tough. I, t- Tom's up there, man. Well, I've been a fan of Boston Celtics for, uh, you know, my whole life pretty much. My first Celtics team was back when I was like seven. And the Boston Celtics became legendary. What is going on YouTube? It is your boy Jess Almeida here on YouTube and on Beantown Takes. And today we are reacting to the news. Grant Williams being traded to the Dallas Mavericks for two second round picks. And then Grant Williams ultimately signing a four year deal worth $53 million. It's four year, three year. I think it's four years for Grant Williams. Honestly, congratulations to Grant Williams for getting paid, getting the money that he thought he was going to be able to get in free agency. Best of luck to Grant Williams. All love and support to Grant Williams' way, or I should say Batman's way. Now Batman is no longer protecting the city of Boston. He will be protecting the city of Dallas. Gonna miss Batman. He's one of the Celtics players that do view my stories on Instagram when I tag him. And sometimes when I put out stuff on the Celtics in general, he does tend to view them. I'm gonna miss Grant. He was one of my Celtic favorites on the team. Not even just the fact based off of talent, just because of the dude he is. He's a funny, hilarious guy. It's hard not to like Grant Williams, but we all saw this coming. I think we can safely say we all saw that Grant Williams was not going to return to the Celtics this season. But now the real question is, how do the Celtics replace that like dog mentality that Grant Williams brought and Marcus Smart brought? If you're asking me, that's the biggest thing that they lost within those guys. Grant Williams was a big piece to the Celtics team. He was like our Draymond Green in a way. And the Celtics are definitely going to miss Grant Williams on this team. How do you replace that? Or have they replaced that with Jordan Walsh? We will go into details with Jordan Walsh in another video. But today is about Grant Williams and our thoughts on the trade. I think getting two second round picks. Brad has to be cooking up some big trade with all these second round picks that he's getting. And the fact that the Celtics have every single one of their first round picks in the future. He's got to be cooking up some sort of trade whatsoever with those picks. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. There's no other way around it. Something's coming where we give up not much in terms of our depth. Like, I would say maybe Peyton Pritchard would be the odd man out next if I had to say so myself. It'd be like Peyton Pritchard and then the back of our bench. Luke Cornett, maybe Sam Hauser, and picks. For a bigger role player. That's something that I could see next. Is Sadiq Bey an option? That's one that I would like to see come on. Come on that's a name that I would like to see on this Celtics team. But we will see. We're going to react to NBC Sports Boston. Reacting to the news of Grant Williams being traded to the Dallas Mavericks. The Celtics get better or worse? They definitely don't get better in this situation. But I still don't feel like they got worse in this situation. They're just not as deep. That's all it is. I don't think they're as deep as before. But are they worse? I still don't think so. And I will briefly bring up Jordan Walsh. He's looked great in the Summer League so far. He's looked great. Right now, if Jordan Walsh can reciprocate half of what he's doing in the Summer League, because obviously he's going to come off the bench. If he's an 8-point scorer off the bench, bringing the defense that he has in the Summer League already, that's why they were okay with letting Grant Williams go. So, see what NBC Sports Boston has to say. Leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoy these videos. Subscribe now if you guys are new. You guys know what to do. Go check out our website. The link's in the description down below. Without further ado, let's hop straight into this video. You know the fate of Williams as he has dealt to the Mavericks in a three-team sign-and-trade. The Celtics get two future second round picks in return and in addition they create a seven million dollar trade exception okay chris mannix from sports illustrated tweeted That's this the after the deal he said boston might exception. not be done they have malcolm brogdon's contract and a handful of first round picks to deal but on brogdon. paper as of now they flipped smart and grant williams for chris Stapp's porzingis and it was a contract year version of porzingis meaning last year 
was a contract run for him. And if that's it, they got worse. Chris Gasper, Boston Globe, joining myself and Michael Holly. Gasper, your thoughts on this deal? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind this deal. You know, I think that what they wanted to do was retain some flexibility during the year. If you sign Grant Williams to this deal, if you match this deal, then you're over that second apron yep. and you lose a lot of flexibility in yep. terms of your roster. Like, if you're making a deal during the year, it has to match dollar for dollar. Now you Which have a trade sucks. exception. It's about, you know, six and a half million. You right. could get a Patty Mills for that. You could get a Ricky Rubio for that. You could get a guy like Trey Mann. Let's say there's too many people in Oklahoma City. There are other players you could get to right. plug holes. If you did this, you were sort of locked into the roster right. as is, unless you dealt Brogdon. But even then, it's again, it would sort of have to be like a dollar for dollar deal. So you're not saving any money right. and you're going over that second name. Uh, can I just say something quickly? Yeah, yeah. Only in Boston would people say you traded Porzingis for Smart and Williams and got worse. Are you kidding yeah. me? I, I don't. Uh, Grant Williams was getting DNP CDs from Joe Mazzulla in the playoffs. And I love Grant Williams. I was like, he should play. But Smart and Grant Williams for Porzingis? <laughs> I, I think well, a lot of teams would do that. Well, I will say, I, though, but you, you do have, have to say they got honestly. worse only because, like, not, not from the Smart part of the deal, okay. the Grant Williams part of the deal. Now, who do they have? And not that it's a big amount of uh, gas, I'm not telling you that, sure, but okay. eight points, four rebounds. And, and somebody who can come into a playoff game every now and then, match up with Jimmy Butler, and be representative on defense. Go into a game against Milwaukee uh, when they're leaving them open and make a bunch of three-pointers in playoff games. So, and defend Giannis. So, so don't have any – and I saw the stat coming from uh, Grant's people. You see the stat? Uh, second spectrum. In 295 oh, half-court matchups with Giannis, <laughs> uh, he's done a really good job. Go to yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I but I would say and just from Grant. that – so is is it worse? Because yes, because they don't have anybody like that. Is it like some they're cratering, they're falling off the map because they made this deal? No, no I think that's that's going okay. too far. Yes. They're not as deep. I mean, I think that's obvious. Sure. Okay, yeah. but in terms of top of the roster, I, they're probably better. My question to you is: so they have an exception for a Ricky Rubio? Yeah. Those other players, like yeah. lost track of. I want to hear forward though. Patty, be a forward. Mill. I want to yeah, hear forward. Would too. you rather have Grant Williams or Ricky Rubio? Would you rather have Grant Williams or Patty Mills? I would rather have Grant, Grant Williams, Williams but again, I think that they don't want to go over that second apron. And if something who does nowadays, I mean, what team it would be willing to go over that second apron? Because then you lose so much things you can do for the rest of that season. It's not as easy as you people think. You go over that second apron. You can't get under that second apron. I don't think at least you can get under that second apron. That is it. You're kind of set at that mark. Because like... Like they said... You have to match dollar for dollar on a trade if you go over that second apron. So realistically, you're stuck there. What are you going to do? There's not much you can realistically do. So Grant Williams had to go. And the $7.3 million exception is not going to go against you. It doesn't go against you. So you can add somebody at any time now, and that's not held against them. I think that's how that works. But I'm not sure, though. Don't quote me on that. But you get what I'm saying. You get the point. Grant Williams would have cost them not $13.5 million. He would have cost them... Probably 26 or whatever it is. Something like that. Because then you have to pay the tax also. For signing Grant Williams. And with the Celtics. And, and is it smart. For the Celtics to. Overspend. On a guy. Who is. Your. Eighth man on the roster at best. But realistically let's say the 10th guy on your roster. Or ninth guy on the roster. No, it isn't smart. So he had to go. It's unfortunate, but he had to go. Something else happens along the way. An injury. Let's say if they keep Brogdon on the roster or Derek White gets hurt, you don't really have flexibility at that point to fix your team. And if guys do stay healthy, which is a big if with yeah. the front line that they have. I mean, they are getting... Brad Stevens is all in on probably the most brittle front line in the NBA with Al Horford, who didn't play back-to-backs last year, Robert Williams, and Celtics Porzingis. If are a going to make one more move in free agency, I would really like them to get a forward-type player 
Obviously, it will probably have to be for the minimum. But here's a guy that I'd be willing to give the flyer on. That's Terrence Ross. Big gamble. Yeah. I don't deny that. But if those guys are healthy, tell me where the minutes for Grant Williams are. Well, where but, are they? And, and it's not just that front court. You're right. You know, those guys are. This team are, will play the those four guys two are brittle. In small ball lineups. Throw it in there. I said this to Felger uh, on the night when I thought it was going to be Brogdon for Porzingis. I said, you can't have Brogdon and Porzingis on your team. And you do. <laughs> so you got Brogdon, Porzingis, Al Horford at 37, 38 years old, <laughs> and point. Rob Williams. So now point. that's that's four guys. That's four guys point. that you're really counting on. Um, so I think that's a factor, and uh, of that that exception, they have to use it this time. Yes, they got to use it. They, uh, have they to gotta, use it. They need a forward uh, who can come in and give you a little something. Right now, to think of your mind's eye, think of a rugged guy who can play defense and you know play a couple of positions. They don't have that. Sam Hauser can shoot, yeah. but they need somebody who can come in and defend. And and uh, again, who's that? Okay, perfect example. Who's that Jimmy Butler guy this year? Not that Williams did an amazing job. I was going to say, like, but was Williams a force on Jimmy Butler? I don't know. Because he really talked a lot of smack. He yeah, right. Jimmy got and then, yeah. And he pretty much cost him one game, game one. So was it yeah, he pretty much costed him game one. Really but, yeah. positive. But if you need somebody to say, okay, Jimmy Butler's torching us, yeah. you check him. Who's that guy? I don't know, but honestly, and I game love two, Grant. I wish they kept, but game that guy two. wasn't Grant Williams. To me, I look at this and say, I'm not saying you're better, but I can't buy that you're worse because I think right. you took even a little bit. Yeah, you're not as a deep. Bit. It's a, I mean, I think deep, not as deep, and worse to me are not the same thing. Right. I, you're not as deep, but if the coach isn't going to use it, how many how many minutes last year did Tatum and Brown average? <laughs> right. If the coach isn't going to use the depth, then what's the point of the depth? Yeah, the pressure right. the pressure's on Joe Missoula. It, it, it would have been on Joe Missoula to use Grant. Now the pressure is on him to use the roster that he has very wisely, and the pressure's on the front office, Felger, to use these. Getting all these second round picks. Yes. What they're trying to say is. We can't pay our seventh or eighth guy $13 million a year. So now we need to hit on some of these second round picks. Yes. And these guys have yep. to be a part of the rotation. Well, that's, right. so that's the NBA going and those right. picks are what, that's what If you have a trade exception, that's what gets attached to get You've the You've got to hit those guys. Because you can't send a player with the trade exception. So now you attach that. That's what they did for Evan Fournier. That's why those second round picks are valuable. Because now we have a trade exception. We send you the second round pick. You send us the player. We put him in the trade exception. Okay, it's one of the right. realities of having two max players or super max players. And yet, we still don't have word. On Jalen Brown, oh, according to, to Jared Jaylen Weiss Brown. of The Athletic, part okay. of the holdup on Brown's extension was the fact that the Celtics needed a resolution on Grant Williams first. Weiss also reports that the new Brown contract is more than just a number, and things such as incentives and player options complicate the deal. Right. I, I don't get why Grant Williams would have been a holdup, because why does Jalen Brown, like Jalen Brown's going to accept a different number or a different contract, whether Grant Williams is here or not? It takes, it's not just the team saying, all right, Grant Williams is here or not. Now we'll do this. I mean, Jalen Brown doesn't give a crap about uh, Grant Williams' money. I want what I want. I don't get why the two are related. You can explain that to me if they are. And do you agree with that second part? And what do you think the holdup is? Yeah, it's interesting. What's going to happen first? We get a word on Patrice Bergeron or Jalen Brown signs this extension? I don't know. I mean, what are the odds? Uh, I think maybe that first year number, the Celtics want to tweak a little bit, and Grant Williams might have been part of that. But if I'm if I'm Jalen Brown, why do I want anything less than the 35%? Right, exactly. Right. Jalen Brown has to agree to it. So the Celtics can want all they want with Grant Williams or without him. But Jalen Brown didn't give a crap about that. They can sort of appeal to him, Patriots, yeah. Brady style, and say, hey, in order for us to win, have a deeper roster, can you take a little bit less in year one, which I don't think he's going to do. Okay, All well, right. what do you think the holdup is? Then? Yeah, you, you said you're confused, uh, Felger, by the holdup. The reason why you're confused? Because it's confusing, and there's, they're not related. I don't yeah, think right. they're related yeah. at all. And I'm going to go out of here. Let's see, today is July 5th, uh, and they can announce something on July 6th. I would not be surprised in the least that you, fear, you hear something tomorrow. We ended up hearing that a deal might be coming within this week. Oh, well, this was last week. So, last week at this time, we heard that it might take a week or so to get the deal finalized. But we did hear that a deal was in the works and they are optimistic that it's going to get done. So, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. So, that's going to do it for this video here. Leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoy these videos. Subscribe now if you guys are new. You guys know what to do. Go check out our website. The link's in the description down below. You know how you guys feel on the entire Grant Williams situation. Are you upset that he's gone? Are you happy? Because now he doesn't have to poke the bear anymore. And now 
he doesn't cost Celtics games or whatever, so on and so forth. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. It's been your boy Jesse, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, guys.